Hello everyone, my name is Steve Rosales. I am currently a dance major here at Arizona State University. I would like to welcome you all to the ASU Gamage Each Measure series. I have currently been doing a lot of accommodations for the pandemic in terms of adjusting my artistic process and the development of my work. As I previously stated, I am a dance major, so I do dance um, among several other things. Um, as you will see, a lot of my development now has to take place within my own home, which is a dorm here at Arizona State University. Um, because the studios aren't as available as they usually are now, for obvious reasons. Um, so I would sort of just like to give you all a brief glimpse of the development that I have in my home spaces and sort of just a glimpse of that process that I have with developing movement and performing for myself here. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy this brief moment of movement.
Recently, the role that environments has played in one of my works, I'm currently working on many, but, but one of my works specifically, I like to work ahead of time before I enter the space and start setting movements on my dancers. Um, so I like to choreograph, you know, before I set rehearsal to involves choreographing here in my own dorm because I don't have regular access to studios outside of the, my own scheduled rehearsal times in studios. So whenever I choreograph something in my dorm, for obvious reasons, the movement isn't as expansive, it doesn't travel a whole lot, it's more intricate and internal. And when I take that I developed in this space and I go to teach it to my dancers, I take a step back, watch them do it a few times, and I notice those differences for myself, how the movement is very internalized and mm, a lot more enclosed, which can be a thing and a bad thing because I adore and love intricacy of movement and precision, but sometimes I do catch myself looking at it and reflecting that, you know what, maybe there could be some more movements, there could be more expansive movements here and there. Um, so occasionally, yes, my environment does cause a little bit to my creative process, but a lot of times I try to stick around and wait until I'm able to enter a studio um, to begin developing movements in there. And of course, like I mentioned, that happens when, thank goodness for the ASU dance program, when we are allowed to schedule time to have our own rehearsal space on campus with the necessary course, I you know will sometimes wait until I'm in the studio to develop movements. If I feel like, you know, I don't have to come in with something pre-prepared to teach, I can just take my time in the studio with my dancers. Sometimes it's by myself and develop movement there and I have more space you know, because it's a studio. Of course, it's not a whole lot of free space because we do have squares now on the floors um, that separate us to be six feet apart at all times. They're 12 by 12 feet. So there are a few differences between organizing an ensemble and organizing maybe a duet or an answer maybe even a trio. Um, sometimes it's lovely to have a minimal of dancers, you know, from one to three because you get to work with them personally. You know, the creative process can be a little bit more in depth. Um, but working with an ensemble and ordering the work on an entire like cast of dancers where it's like from eight to 10 dancers, it is a challenge. But it isn't a challenge that feels like it's beckoning or terrible to me. It's something that I thoroughly enjoy doing. I love having lots of bodies in the space and a lot of different bodies that are capable of things because all dancers are different from their physicality as well as their own creative process. So having that collaborative opportunity of eight, nine, 10, 11 dancers just feeding into the space and bouncing off of one another is great. And it feels great to be able to facilitate that as a choreographer. And I feel like sometimes I have the most fun, you know, with a large ensemble because there are bodies in the space and so many ideas to just interact with one another, which I would say is really beneficial to me also as a choreographer because not only am I informing my dancers, but they also in turn are informing me and are telling me what the piece is about. They're telling me where this, where the direction of this piece needs to go, where I feel like it's what I think necessary to meld it into in that moment in time during the rehearsal process. This is also, you know, prevalent and common with smaller casts, of course, but you know, just for me personally, seeing work on a large number of dancers is just so, ugh, it makes me giddy and I love to do it. I personally believe that at all times of the day, at all moments of my artistic process, 
my Latinx identity is already shaping my inquiry and research as a dancer. Growing up as a Latinx um, cis male, that just inherently, I, I feel as though that inherently just automatically influences my perspective, not just my artistic process, but just the way that I generally view day-to-day -day living. And I think that in all of my artistic processes, there is always going to be a lot of my Latinx identity sort of influencing what is being created. Although I will say that although like it was inherent for me to, you know, create work with a Latinx lens per se, that I don't actually prioritize it a whole lot, which is um, not so much a hindrance, but it's also something that I could possibly prioritize in exploring a little bit more, I think, um, because it does doesn't really necessarily revolve around that part of my identity. Um, but I do think that it is important to explore that in my art and my creation, especially during today's uh, social climate. Um, I think it's important to tap area of myself and create work important to people who are just like me, Latinx, Latinx backgrounds. Um, the events that have made me want to explore that part of my life a little more was when I attended a dance intensive in Tucson last year in May 2019. Um, it was a dance intensive dedicated solely to Latinx dancers, Latinx artists, creators um, of, all, of all kinds of you know mediums, primarily dance, um, where we really just got to be in one place all together, all these Latinx artists, and explore all the creative and artistic concepts that we've already created thus far in our careers, during our academic journey, and just bounce them off of one another and coexist as Latinx individuals and Latinx makers, which was really enlightening and is one of the things I think about a lot today and one of the big influences for me to want to explore more of my Latinx background in my own work. I hope to do that soon. And in case you're wondering specifically what is my Latinx background, both of my parents come from Mexico, so I am a Mexican-American. My father is specifically from in a small area called La Quintenango. And my mother is from Delicias. I'm pretty sure geographically it's close to the border. Not a whole lot of people know about it, but yep, that's me, Mexican, Latinx individual. My experience in the dance community, I would like to say, has been fabulous and super and gorgeous, which it has been. It wasn't like that though. I definitely feel like as a freshman, when I was coming in, I was very, whoa, just starstruck and shocked and sort of um, just felt misguided a little bit. Not so much because of the people that I was like in class, was simply because this whole experience of being not only in college, but prioritizing my the next four years of my academic career as being a dancer, was just so overwhelming to me. And I didn't, I had some trouble reaching out to my peers in my cohort, as well as the, the rest of the staff that was, um, you know, that is part of the ASU dance um, community here, which was, uh, I would say a lot on my part that mostly me who was sort of like isolating and being kind of scared to branch out and talk to people. So definitely my first semester, a little bit going into my second semester of my first year here at ASU, definitely kind of looked isolated and kind of scary. However, eventually I did start to warm up and I began to reach out more of the people in my classes. I began to hit people up more, hang out with them, connect. The more that we collaborated on projects and assignments with each other in class, and the professors were just super sweet and super welcoming. And, you know, despite me being sort of an isolated 
I was first a freshman here at ASU, they wanted to make sure that I felt welcome at all times and that I felt like I could talk to them about anything dance related or not. And eventually, as the years and the semesters progressed, I realized that I love the ASU dance community here so, so much. They are some of the best I've ever met. They mean so much to me. And like, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I love my cohort, all the fourth years. And I love getting to collaborate with all of the up underclassmen and the third years as well. And the staff just make the whole experience just so enjoyable. I personally feel so comfortable in my own skin, so comfortable in my own dancer skin here in the ASU dance community. And I just can't wait to continue this journey and eventually finish it in May of 2021 because I will be graduating and I will miss everyone very deeply. But as far as I can say, my experience here has been very pleasant. Thank you all so much for tuning in and thank you all for watching this episode of Each Measure from ASU Gamage. Again, my name is Steve Rosales, a fourth year dance major here at ASU enjoyed all four lovely years that I spent here. I would like to leave you all with some information on some upcoming dance projects here in the ASU dance program. We have two shows happening in November this year. Our first show that will be happening is our Something Fresh show and our Fall Forward show. You can find information on both shows through the ASU Dance Duos page on Instagram as well as the ASU Dance Duos page on Facebook. The next show that we have upcoming is our Senior Transitions Projects, where I myself will be presenting work because I am a senior! Woo! Premiering in February of 2021, specifically February 5th to 7th. And again, information on that can be found on the ASU Dance Duos page on Instagram and the ASU Dance Duos page on Facebook. And last but not least, I would like to plug in my own, my own very own show that will hopefully be premiering in May 1st of 2021. There is not a whole lot of information on that show yet because it is still very much in a nickel, very, very much in the works and not a whole lot of people know about it. But if you'd like to keep up with me, I'll be updating everybody on that process as well as the time draws May of next year. So if you would like to keep up with me, my Facebook handle is Steve Rosales, same as my own name. And if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, my Instagram handle is at LicensePuto, that is spelled L-I-C-E-N-S-E-T-U-T-O. Again, at LicensePuto. And I would like to thank you all so much again for watching, and I wish you all a lovely, lovely rest of your days.